All right, so I've continued to work a little bit on my spot illustration, this half of it. And you can see if I just build it up from the beginning, I started with just line art. Well, to be really specific, I started with a sketch. Come on. And then I onion skin that sketch, which means I put white over it and then took it down to 50%. And then I traced with my brush tool at 100% opacity and at least 90% hardness. And I used black. I did my black line art, just so you can see it really cleanly. And I corrected some aspects of the sketch. And then once that's all filled in, I could turn my onion skin to a solid blank white layer. And I relabeled that layer white bread, blank white. And I relabeled my line art layer, black bread, line art. And this is what I call the sandwich of digital coloring. You have black bread at the top, white bread on the bottom, and then anything you're going to do basic coloring with is filling the sandwich in between. So let's take off the black bread and let's put on the first thing on the sandwich. So the first thing you put on the sandwich is what's called flat color. So flat local color or flatting color, if you want to use colors that, that don't match the thing you're coloring, is basically just flooding whatever is not in the line art with a solid color. And I just softened the edges and then I used the dissolve a layer style to break them up a little bit and duplicated it because I, I liked this kind of airbrushed look. Now, flat color on its own is what's used in things like uh, peanuts. Car it's used in really kind of basic animation because it's the most direct and the easiest. So what is the local color of Woodstock? It is yellow. What is the local color of Charlie Brown's shirt? It is yellow, <laughs> right? What is the, the local color of the stripes on Peppermint Patty's shirt? Pink. So these are the colors they that they are. It doesn't matter what the lighting is. There's no highlight or shadow to any of it, to their skin tone, to their shoes, to any of it. This is the local flat color. It's only when there's kind of a different approach to the image, like in this panel, where that local color might change. And it's not that the local color changes, it's just that the flat color changes. Just because they wanted to make some emphasis and make it all bright pink there. But that's still flat coloring. So flat coloring is whenever you just flood flood the area with the with a single color. And then local flat color is when you flood it with the single color that the thing actually is despite any lighting conditions. Now, if we look at other versions of Peanuts, especially kind of 3D animated versions, you'll notice that they are no longer just local flat color. They actually have a light source and they have shadows and they have tones to them. And because they're 3D models, they actually take out the outline as well, right? But this is what would be called duotone uh, soft edged color. And it's still digital coloring, even if the outline has been removed. Because digital coloring is whenever there's a real or implied outline that you're coloring behind. All right. But of course, that takes longer, it's a little bit more expensive. Uh, this is a Godzilla spot illustration from a few semesters ago that showcase how effective just splitting your local flat color into two different tones, a light tone and a dark tone, can be. It really can make something more dimensional. So I just made it so Godzilla was lit from the top. So I had a highlight and a shadow. 
and this is called a hard edge or sometimes it's called cut edge or sometimes it's called cell shaded coloring but I'll, I'll try to continue to use the term soft edge or soft edge and hard edge so hard edge just means it's cut like with a knife that division between light and dark okay where are we so once we have flat color flat color looks okay on its own you know and i took a lot of time trying to pick the right colors but then the next part of the sandwich is a duotone layer and so what i did is i just duplicated all of the the flat local color onto its a new layer and then i darkened them all which you can see here and then i go into that layer which is the only layer i have that's unlocked and i'll cut out some highlights of the teeth i take my lasso with zero feather and i'm just gonna hold down shift make a lot of little quick lassos why am I doing zero feather? Well, I want to demonstrate hard edge duotone. And I hit delete. And I've cut out highlights on all those teeth now. So if I turn off the flat color underneath, what I'm doing is just cutting out shadows, kind of roughly with my lasso. If I wanted it to be softer, a softer transition, I could use feather. So for instance, if I feather by, let's say, eight pixels, and then use my lasso, and then cut out from the teeth, first of all, everything I draw kind of shrinks a little bit because it's already being feathered in. But what this will do will soften the edge. And so when I delete, it'll be a lot more subtle. but that would be what's called soft edge duotone. So if I'm doing hard edge, just as kind of a, a strong discipline, I have feather turned all the way off. And this way on all of my flat coloring, I now have a shadow shape. everywhere that's needed. So I've done that now on the top half, I think almost everywhere. You can see all of those little highlights. They're pretty rough, but that's okay. I'm not done yet. And I can always modify everything's on its own layer. And then in a few places, notably these pieces of fabric, I went beyond just two tones. So what did I do? How did I do that? Because I have this lighter tone underneath. And so you can expand your duotone by just using your paintbrush. And painting in other tones, right? So as, as long as they are based on the the flat color, just light and dark versions of the flat color, you can add as many as you like. So I split this up into three tones. So that's what was there before. So I added a dark and I added a light. And I can always go in with my brush on my duotone layer and clean it up. And here, this gray, it's kind of a, a bluish gray, so I pushed it darker and I pushed it lighter. Oh no, I actually just pushed it darker twice. <laughs> so I went with even a, a darker shadow, just to, to give those three tones. If I wanted to push it into four, I could. And this is how I might do that. I could just go right into my shadow layer. Kind of lasso just that portion of it. Instead of deleting it, I could actually go to my adjustments, my levels, 
and I can just slide the mid-tone to the right and just make that a little bit darker. And add yet a darker tone as it gets into the shadows. And I can always just paint it directly. Because remember, all of this is behind my black bread layer. And if I am using the, the paintbrush, all I have to do is hold down Option to change it to the eyedropper tool. Whoops. All right. So I've done one half with Duotone Hard Edge. Now what I'm going to do is the other half. So I'm going to unlock all these layers. This is just how I designed mine. I'm going to select everything. I'm going to hit Control T to transform it all. Up before I do that, I want to crop everything. So that it, it flips without changing orientation at all. So now that I've cropped everything, if I do Control T, huh, it still gives me broad space. Why is that? Well, I'll have to live with that for now. And I will flip it 180 degrees. And then I'll start cutting away highlights from the top half. Whoops, I just flipped the sketch. Come on. So I got to select all of them, holding down Shift, Control T, flip 180 degrees. There we go. Hit return. And so now I'm going to use the same method. And I'm still going to do it with just the zero feathered lasso. I'm going to do it pretty quick. And wherever I want there to be a highlight, I just circle and delete. And we'll do it across all the, the different color shapes underneath. So I'm being kind of rough. And it only gets tricky when you're overlapping certain areas. So where I want to cut it right on the line here, whoops, I can use Option to cut away from the selection, like that. Now I wish there, like there's a smooth function in Photop when you use your brush. I wish there was a smooth function when you use the lasso. And there isn't. The way to do that is with the feather. But I want this to be, you know, for teaching and demonstration purposes, I want this to be really cleanly cut out. So it's 
undisputably hard edge 